So let's just go to our new and we'll choose conceptual mass. And uh, let's just maximize this view. And to start off with, all I'm going to do is start to draw some reference uh, planes. So we go up here, we'll go uh, reference plane, and we'll choose draw reference plane. And we'll put place one here and here. And I'm not too worried about where I'm positioning them because I'm going to use parameters to drive them in a minute. And we'll place another one here and another one here. So once we've done this, we we'll just have a quick look, and we're going to start to use um, some aligned dimensions, and we'll equalize this. We'll do the same on these two here, and we'll equalize these two, and likewise we'll pick the center line and equalize the two outer ones. Let me change the um, scale to say 1 to 500 so you can see what's going on here, so you can see the equalized dimensions. We'll do another dimension string here, a dimension string here, and also a dimension string for the outer two reference planes for this one here. So we've done that, uh, what we're going to do now is parameterize our dimensions. We'll select this one here and we'll add a label, and say add a parameter. I like to group them under dimensions. Uh, let's make it an instance parameter and all I'm going to do is say length. And we'll OK that and you can see my uh, dimension then has the parameter assigned to it and we'll pick up this one here and we'll say add a parameter inner width and label there type group it under dimensions and OK that we'll select this a param uh, dimension here and we'll parameterize this we'll make this outer width uh, group it as a uh, assign it as an instance and again group it under dimensions and we'll OK that. So what the normal best practice approach is is to come into your family types and we'll just flex it so you can see all our dims there so let's just start to check some of this let's make this inner width here 45 meters the outer one will make 70 meters and the overall length, um, let's just bring it in a little bit, let's make it like 62 meters, just apply that and you should see the structure here um, of the reference planes automatically go in, so just take that back. Um, what I'm going to do now is go to reference line and I'm going to snap between here and here on this middle line here and from here to here. Now, by having assigned these reference lines to the actual, or sorry, reference uh, lines are to the actual reference planes, I didn't actually have to lock them. They'll automatically snap to the to those locations. Um, if I go to types, I can start to just tweak the geometry again. Let's go back in here. Let's make that 75 meters and apply it, and you should see the length of the lines either increase or, or move further apart depending on the parameter that I, I picked. Okay, so the basis of, of, of the form is coming together. Now, what I want to do, I need to control um, a, a, a point um, on the apex of the spline uh, uh, that I'm going to apply. So I do this, I'm going to choose a reference point and I'm going to posi position it on that reference line likewise here and here and all I've done is position the point so it sits automatically in the middle of the line now I could if I wanted to um, control the hosted position of that point but I don't I just want to leave it like that for the time being so let's just zoom in here and we're going to say pick our, our actual point there and you can see there's always a plane associated that point we'll go to lines and if we come along here you can see it's automatically snapping it's trying to find the intersection um, it, if I was going to place um, a reference line to where it actually has to snap to the, to the intersection of that point all I'm going to do is just draw it down but I'm actually going to snap it to the end of the line we'll set it another one here and do likewise let's draw down 
we'll set one here as well and we'll draw a line down again now what I need to do is make sure that these lines are snapped okay exactly and locked to this point so the best way to do this as you can see here as I select it I get some of the temporary dimensions but not all of them the safest way is go to a front view within a 3D view when I see that I get my temporary dimension and I select it what I'm going to do now is select the line the uh, permanent dimension turns temporary select that make that zero you can see then the, the line will drop down to the point if I select this dim here and I'm going to lock it let's pick up the center one temporary dim make this zero but actually what I'm going to do I've made a mistake there let's just back up because where, where I don't get it if I turn this to that's better and we'll select the line make this zero and we can be assured that we need to lock it so you need to just be careful of that now in this case here if we select it okay when I set it in 3D you didn't see the temporary dimension but when I went to a front elevation I do which is exactly what I was trying to achieve so I'll select this make this uh, from temporary to permanent and go back make it zero and select and lock it if we go back to our 3D view now you can see all our, our, our vertical uh, points uh, lines sorry which are going to control the apex of the splines are locked now so let's select this first one and we'll turn this because uh, we want to apply um, a vertical dim here uh, select that turn that into permanent in each case and then what we're going to do is we're going to select this uh, a permanent dim here and we'll say uh, let's say outer apex this uh, instance and dimension we'll select this one as inner apex distance and dimension and finally what we'll do is we'll assign that to the outer apex okay so if we go back into types we should find our apex uh, parameters here let's start to go and tweak these let's make that 20 meters and we'll make this inner one uh, maybe just uh, 17 meters and apply it and you should see now our lines have gone up and down which is great so we know full well the bone structure of this is working for us it then ties together so what we're going to do now is we'll go to reference and we're going to choose spline let's select the end of this reference line let's pick the vertical line that's going to control the apex and we'll select this line at the end of the line there and all I do is escape out and likewise I'll do this inner one and this last one here so carefully remembering to snap to the end of the actual reference lines so we go back in here go to types constantly always go back and check to make sure that everything's working for us we'll make this like uh, 30 meters and we'll make the outer apex say 40 meters and we'll apply that and you should see the uh, splines that have I positioned um, increase and decrease as required which is great so what we can do now if we control select the actual splines we can easily just say create form and connect a surface over that form constantly I will just go back tweak the parameters again just to make sure they're all working for us so let's uh, decrease the outer apex to say 15 meters and the inner apex only to 10 meters and apply which is good and this is a double check let's go make sure that the length and widths are working for us so let's make that 65 meters and we'll change the um, inner width here from 45 let's make that 55 meters and apply it you can see now that surface is automatically adjusting based on the parameters that I'm plugging in